Do you see this beauty? These treasures? So, there are my decoupage buttons and they used to be like those ones not beautiful but after I decoupage them with napkins you see how they turn out and they are so pretty hello my friends welcome to my crafting look my name is Vera and today I want to share with you the process this process how to embellish uh, the old ugly buttons I'm more than sure you have a lot of them in your stash and uh, mostly I don't know what to do with them <coughs> so but after I uh, I will show you how to embellish them, how to alter them. Uh, you, you can use them in your projects, in your junk journals. Uh, also, I use them uh, as a flower center, so uh, a lot of ways you come up with uh, to use them, because they are pretty. And so what uh, do you have to have uh, to alter your buttons? First of course you so let me move. So first you have uh, to have some buttons, old buttons. Uh, it's, it will be easy to work if they will be pretty big or like medium size. Uh, I also made some tiny ones, but uh, believe me, it's pretty difficult to work with them. So then larger the button, then easier to decorate it. Also, you can use those kind of buttons with the uh, leg. Doesn't matter. <coughs> you can embellish. You can uh, alter it, uh, absolutely any kind of buttons. Uh, so buttons again. Some napkins you would like to apply on your buttons. Uh, mm, I don't have a lot of uh, napkins, so I will use what I have. But uh, like a uh, my suggestion uh, use the napkins you have uh, with a, a small pattern it will be more beautiful so if it's here i don't have like maybe this one one so and uh, also uh, some gesso so i'm going to use my homemade gesso. Uh, you can use your your own gesso you haven't had. And then uh, Mod Podge, Mod Podge. So uh, again, I I'm going to use my homemade Mod, Mod, Mod Podge. So if you are interested, uh, you can find uh, a lot of recipes uh, in uh, on YouTube. There are a lot of uh, tutorials how to make uh, homemade gesso, homemade mod podge, so I'm uh, going to use my homemade, the, mm, mm, they give pretty the same results, so it's good to use them, and of course it's much much cheaper, and uh, also you have uh, to have some kind of acrylic finish like lacquer uh, vanish how to how you uh, how do you um, name it so to give the finished look for our buttons and to uh, to secure them uh, from tearing 
from something, uh, from some damage. Let's start. So, I made an advance one of uh, the buttons, so to show you how it looks when you have only one a coat of gesso. So I put only one coat of gesso and let it dry. And so it's not enough as you can see. So if you are working with the white buttons, it will be enough to make only one coat of gesso because they're white. And gesso here is uh, like a base uh, because our buttons they all too smooth and napkins want to stick to the buttons so we have to use uh, one coat of gesso but if you have your buttons there more dark so like this one and even this because you you see the color shows through the uh, one coat and when we for example Let me peel the layer so you, you have to prepare napkins as usual. You, you make it, you do it, so, like, peel the extra layers, white layers, and leave it like one layer. So when we apply it, we see that it's not enough. So for uh, colorful um, buttons, it's better to uh, to use two or maybe three coats of gesso. So it depends from the gesso, from the type of gesso you have. But you will see it during your work. And now you see that after the second coat of gesso, it looks it looks uh, better. This is the second coat, and here it will be the first coat. It's too transparent. So we have to add more. And don't forget to apply gesso on the sides of your buttons as well. About the back side, it's up to you. I don't do uh, So I don't glue napkins uh, on the back side because I don't need this back side. Nobody will see it. Anyway, all my buttons, they will be glued to something. And here I suppose I will have to apply maybe three coats. So now it's one coat, first coat. And maybe on this one, I will have to add more cards of gesso. Now we have to dry it. You can uh, dry it, let them dry naturally, but I want to speed up the process, so please. Uh, be bare and maybe you can mute uh, the sound because now I'm going to make some noise and yes the problem is that now they they can start to fly so I will put those aside and we'll hold this way. Quick, 
quickly, it dries quickly, very quickly. So the next one. almost dry and the last one with the two coats of gesso now it absolutely dry completely dry, so you can see it. And uh, to show you the difference, so this is two coats of gesso and for this, because it's light uh, color uh, button, uh, it's enough. But for this I think we have to make more, so this will be the second one coat and you see it becomes light. So let me dry it too the, to show you the difference. As you can see, it isn't enough, so it maybe you have uh, to put another coat. So after the third coat of gesso, I think it will be okay. So because I have one ready, absolutely ready button, I will use you the next steps on that. But now we have to prepare our Mod Podge. be mixed well. So prepare uh, your napkin. So I want those uh, words, those sign on this button. So Remove, remove this part. And put Mod Podge on the button. And apply it on the sides as well, because we want to have uh, neat and clean sides, you see. So now carefully put the button and just carefully how to say, stroke them. And with the fingers, of course, you don't have any tools because this is very important because you will feel uh, 
the top is it enough smooth or not and to give it the good very good connection and maybe to put just and carefully spread it to your sides Wrap it then more gel, uh, more podge you put, then better. So it has to be absolutely wet with gesso, like soak the gesso and try to wrap. Don't worry if you see that it, your napkin is, is going to tear. It's okay, so just try not to and thoroughly wrap the fingers wrap your button with a napkin very easy isn't it and that's all Put as much Mod Podge on your button as you can to be absolutely sure that it's absolutely smooth and wrapped well and stick sticks well. So you see and the last thing we have to do is to poke the holes with the hole so just put them inside and it's all let me show you just put it this way And maybe to put Mod, Mod Podge directly uh, on the hole and then use again. Oh, and another one. I hope you see it well. You don't have to do anything extra, so it will be like your all will make everything naturally. Just to poke and maybe to uh, swirl it and this way you will have absolutely neat and clean holes just don't be rush take your time and it's almost ready now we have to dry to let it dry again you can do it naturally I'm going to make 
some noise again, so be patient please. very quickly so do you see it? is it pretty? So, and the last one step, just to put the acrylic finish on this uh, button. So, my dear friends, my dear watchers, so I can't suggest you uh, anything about uh, supplies because I live so far from you and we uh, have absolutely different products so you know better than I what do you have in your stores in your craft, uh, crafting store, uh, craft stores so I just can see you that this is something so like lacquer like acrylic finish for to finish uh, your creations to secure them from the damage, from the water, from tearing. So just put some vanish. And also, I don't use any fancy tools, supplies, because it's uh, we don't have uh, all this assortment of craft crafting supplies and products as you have. So mostly, I use just very simple um, products I can find. Um, in the local stores like like for example hardware store and use them so you can do the same thing so you don't have to buy a lot of supplies a lot of materials products to make something beautiful you you can buy very simple, cheap products and use them successfully and you will get absolutely the same result. So if you're in doubt, so all oh, how I can do it, I don't have, for example, gesso, I don't have this gesso, this kind of gesso, I don't have this kind of much much podge, it doesn't matter. Just go and uh, figure out how to make a homemade gesso. It's abs oops, it's absolutely easy. It's absolutely cheap. Uh, you don't have any. What is much podge? It's just a white school glue uh, with uh, uh, some um, vanish, and that's all. And a bit of water. It's very simple recipe. So again, there are a lot of tutorials how to make a homemade gesso, homemade mod podge. Don't worry about uh, it if you don't have them uh, in stash. So it's easy to make the homemade. And again. I will 
dry it quickly. So, mute the sound. And Bob's your uncle. We have a pretty soul. Do you remember how it looked before? Nothing interesting. So, and now we have one of a kind button <laughs> with those signs. So, and yes, now you, I can use it in my projects uh, to glue on the pages to use as uh, um, as well as uh, uh, paper clips. So if it enough big you can glue the um, paper clip uh, to the back side and use it as a paper clip in your journals and so there are a lot of um, ways to use uh, those buttons hope you will enjoy uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, way uh, of making your own uh, unique buttons so please uh, leave me a like if you like this video if you enjoyed it uh, share it if you found that it was useful uh, it was helpful so and uh, uh, don't forget to subscribe on my YouTube channel and don't forget to push the bell button that to get uh, the not notifications about the next videos so don't miss the updates and go out there and make something beautiful today so happy crafting bye bye